quite interesting that because the last time I did an interview with you was, you know, I'd just come off two quite big records, you know, the, like the, the Manix Lifeblood album and, and the Melanie C record. And I was completely wiped out, you know, I, I, I pretty much after that interview, I didn't go into a studio for three months. I, I hired a camper van and I drove around New Zealand and I, I jumped off bridges and it's probably some sort of midlife crisis really. And uh, I, I just lost, it wasn't, you know, they, it was, it wasn't so much that I didn't enjoy making the records because I did. I really loved making those records. It was just such a lot of work at such a high pressure level, you know. And, and it was still quite new to me working at that sort of, you know, at that sort of pressure really. And um, so I just took time out and then gradually eased my way back into recording again. And the beauty of making those records, obviously, it gives you the the advantage of having been able to take some time out. And it was the best thing I did. I just started really, you know, listening to a lot of music again and. And just ease my way back in, and just, I just, you know, especially in this last year, I just really loved making records. I found some brilliant artists, and a lot of new bands, and a lot of Eastern European artists, and a lot. Of, and I've been back to New Zealand a lot, and made a lot of records there. That have luckily, have done really well there. So there's always a good source of work there. And uh, yeah, no, it's been been really interesting. So it's, it's, you know, it's, in the three years since we spoke last, it's been quite a, you know, um, you know. A, and, it, and just the way I approach work as well has been quite a big turnaround in just well just just the ease of you just getting used to using lots of different studios and so I'd always kind of t tend to find a place to stick with it and I just found that moving around studios a lot is just really interesting because you you make different records all the time I think doing Melanie's record really kind of helped do that because we move studios so many times on our record you f and you found interesting things approaches to sounds in every studio and different bits of gear and stuff and so I thought oh, I want to carry on doing this so you know that's one of the reasons I wanted to try this place out. I, I've never had more fun making records because I think maybe some of it because a lot of people are putting their own money into records the people who are very serious about they, they're serious about making good music they're the people who tend to make records now so you know I'm sure there's a multitude of reasons but you know, I've not seen any sign of work drying up at all. You know, I'm, I'm, having, I'm having real problems trying to fit work in. I'm having to turn down things, and and uh, yeah, I, I and the whole. You know, I, I get so many offers to work from MySpace every day. You know, bands contact me all the time. And, you know, would you, you get the usual? Would you, you know, I want to make an album, but I've got no money. And obviously, there there, there has to be a you know a minimum amount of budget available just to so you can you know use decent studios and get the record sounding good. But he, so I found some really interesting projects from you know, MySpace connections, which just completely I didn't expect. I just thought it would all be like rubbish bands with terrible songs. And he found all this amazing stuff. And uh, so yeah, it's been that's been you know a large chunk of my work these days comes from you know, initially from contacts with MySpace, which is quite a surprise. Really. I think musicians and, and and music lovers have have, have regained control. I, I really believe that because. You know, people go out and they'll find music, and they and they find it themselves rather than being told by a label. This is what you've got to listen to, and this is what you've got to like. So, you know, I, I, I although there's a lot of you know moaning in the industry about you know about downloading, I just think it'll balance out. It'll it'll work itself out in the end, and 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 I think we'll get better music as a result. Music will not stop being made because we all love music. Mm. You know, it inspires us all. You know, every day. So. We'll just we'll just work 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 through it, and uh, but I I I think better music is being made now than ever. I really do. I find music less corporate. You know, people can you know st there's less there's less layers of of interference really. You know, like the producer deals almost directly with the artist now, and maybe there might be one other person who's investing, or so there's not a huge chain of people you know to to try and please all the time. So I think pure records are being made. So. The actual the material is is more close is was closer to the artist's vision for the record than it was a few years ago. And that's just in my experience. I might other producers might find it find that different. But in the sort of areas I work with, like, you know, I work with a lot of new artists who've got you know maybe private investment or small labels. Just because I like working in those areas, because I, I enjoy the purity of working with new new artists. And uh, and I think yeah, I think the records the better records are being made because there's less interference. So, you know, it's a good thing. Yeah, I think, I think, I, think the, I actually really love the way the industry's going. I'm, 
I will not have it. <laughs> you know, I will not be told it's all doom and gloom and it's all going to fall apart because it won't. If I need to save some budget, I'll, I'll tend to jump on and do more engineering. And I still do all, all the manic stuff I do. I still do all the engineering because because they're used to me doing that. You know, I've always done that with them. So, you know, when I did I did Nick's solo album, I did some of James's solo album, and I engineered all those records as well as produce. But I, but when I'm doing that, I still bring someone in to do Pro Tools. I mean, I, I've been working with Laws for about five years now, so we've done loads of records together. And, He's been doing Pro Tools, and and, I, and he does a lot more engineering now as well. Like I'll tend to sit back when we're doing vocals and, and guitar dubs and things, just let him get on with it. He's a bit of a legend, Loz. He's a legend. He's, he's sort of, um, you know, he's, he was the house engineer at Loco Studios when when Loco was open, and uh, we were there on the last day before the bailiffs came in, <laughs> before the studio went under. So we had to sort of we had to finish some mixes off and then get all that all my equipment out of there before you know because I had my Pro Tools rigged there and loads of stuff. And um, so we and Lars were there on the last day and then, and I kind of, you know, I've been looking with someone for a while and, you know, and then I put him a job and we've been doing records, you know. So any records that I, that I you know, do in the UK or and, and all the European stuff I do with Lars. So. The, one of the, the greatest, like, fortuitous things I, had, I ever did was that, was go to New Zealand and start making records on Kiwi budgets, mm -hmm. which are a lot tighter than UK budgets. So you learn to make a great record. Just work. Just do it quickly. Get the record done, and you know. So I, I was making these records here, and, and we're spending like three, four weeks, you know, making albums. And I, and, and I was, it was some of the work I was the most happy with. And so I try to apply those principles of working to, into the UK, and so you can end up making albums for a lot cheaper. So so when 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 the squeeze came, you know, I was, there was still plenty of work out there. You can, you can get in there and. And a lot of it's just trying to, trying to, you know, decide what your fee level should be, you know, and how much back end you want to take, and, mm. you know, and, and the way I see it is if I, if I like the band and I want to make the record, then yeah, I'm happy to do it for less money because yeah. you want to make those records, you want to make records that people are going to, going to connect with people, yeah. and it, it, it can't always be about how much money you can get up front, you know, it, you need to show some faith, you know, there's a balance because we've all got a mortgages to pay and we've all got to, you know, make a living, but, you know, if if if, if a band's a good band. Make the record. That's, that, that's my, you know. I, 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 mean, I want to be in the studio with musicians that inspire me. Otherwise, I don't see the point in actually being a record producer. I, 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 I don't really believe in formulas, you know. I, I think I, because I, my, I work across quite a few genres. Although that, I tend to have narrowed a bit in the last few years. I'm, I I'm starting to pick a lot of music that I really, really enjoy listening to. Like I've been doing a lot of um, Eastern European, sort of Russian. Sort of soundscapey bands, sort of Mark Weisig or Ross, you know, Cocteau Twins, very dense soundscapes. Because that sort of music I've been listening to a lot, and uh, so I kind of jump at the chance to work with those sort of bands. And um, yeah, I think that um, yeah, but but then you but you can approach them because it depends how the musicians interact. If they sound amazing when they play together, just put them in the room and get them to play. If they if they're a little bit shaky then you know maybe you need to sort of or maybe there's one member that needs special treatment you just find out you know the, the find out the way they feel most comfortable doing it because especially with young bands they can get very intimidated in the studio and so you try to make the environment as you know as conducive to work as possible without you know and make them and so they don't feel intimidated by it but uh, you know so there's a lot you know producing a lot of psychology involved in it anyway I, ge I genuinely think working quickly is it's good. It's a good thing, you know. Especially with you know, with if you've got record and stuff and everything, I think there comes a point where you just lose perspective on the song. And you know, I've always I just got into I got into mixing really quickly anyway because I was I used to record you know bands who had no money and you just have to bag off a mix at the end of the day. And often mixes of mine that make records tend to be basically glorified mods mix because as soon as I've done the drums, I'm bringing everything back to the desk anyway. So. You know, my mix has been mixed, it's a whole day mix anyway. So as we're tracking guitars, the whole thing's coming together. And that's pretty much, the, my favorite mixes from that I've done on records tend to be those mixes, rather than, right, we're going in for a mixed day, you know? Mm. So I just think there's just something more instinctive about it somehow. Are you, are you often used to sort of do track from the ground up, including drums? I just find you type so many mics and compressors and stuff on drums. It's best to get, just try, if we can get, you know, even if you don't do the whole album, just do half the album, drum tracks, and then start tracking on it. And then do another setup, sort of halfway through. But yeah, I just find it's um, you know, once the drums are down, then just then pick a song and finish it. 
get everything on it, guitars, bass, vocals, and, uh, and, and even do a mix on it. Because then, then at least then you've got, you're building up your album as you go through. So when you get to the end, you're not like, oh my god, I've got two days left, I've got to mix 12 songs. And, but, uh, it can be done. I just did, I just mixed an album in two days. I did, we did, I mixed 13 songs in two days. And we, and it, and we, didn't, have to, we didn't remix anything. You know, we had an approach for the record and it was very organic sounding and we found, you know, it, we tracked it all at a little tracking studio and just, you know, we had a really clear idea what we wanted to do with the mixes. We just went in and thought, well, that's all we've got in the budget to do, we're just going into this, we've got to do it. There were long days, but we got the record done and, um, and I didn't, I didn't, I'd already done three albums with the same band. So it, it was, so we, had, we knew each other's work and we knew what we wanted from the record. And we did mix the whole thing in two days. And Lifeboat was just fraught for a lot of reasons, and I mean I'm really proud of that record. And um, you know, and there's yeah, there's been a lot of sort of people have gone back and listened to it and realised it actually is a really good record. I Maybe mean, got commercially, but as a, a body of work, it was I think it was a really good piece of work. It was very cold and very you know and very dark. And but that was that was the, the brief for the record. We, you know, it, it was meant to sound electronic and very clinical. Yeah. But obviously with the new album, they've gone back to what people expect from them, you know, which is that sort of big, loud, loud rock band. And it sounds, and they sound amazing. And, and when, when I came in, because I wasn't expecting to do any work on the new record, because I thought Dave Oringa was going to pretty much do the whole album. Yeah. But um, they called up last summer and said, you know, really, can we come in, really come in the studio for a couple of weeks? We want to do, work on four songs, and or oh, five songs we worked on, actually. Four of those made the record. And it was just, it was kind of joyous, really, because they were, they, they were just playing like, in, 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 I wouldn't say much say comfort zone, but in a, in an area that was very familiar to them, you know, and, and you could obviously see it was it was a very enjoyable process. So the whole session was just deeply enjoyable, and there was no pressure, and we just went in and recorded a lot of tracks, and and I think that shows with the album, and 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 it's connected with people again. People have gone out and they have bought it, and it's done really well, and and, uh, and it's it's been nice for everybody really, because you know some of us have been involved with the band for like twelve years. To see them have another a new lease of life, it's been um, it's been really pleasing for all of us. I, I really well, it's fant fantastic, really. It's a wonderful facility, you know. So, but this is the first time I've actually done drums here, and it's, uh, it sounds great. It's very controlled. This room, you know, it's just not it's not like your, your big kind of you know reflections everywhere. It's all very controlled, but. But this, all the frequencies are there, and it does sound gorgeous. So the tone's great, the monitoring's brilliant. Yeah. And and the way they run the facility is, is really, really good. The biggest shock I had with the duality was it sounds really warm, mm. which I just was not expecting at all. I thought if anything was going to be colder and harder. And you know, I, I, I know I like I like SSLs, I like the sound of guitars through SSLs. I love that crunchy mid-range. And but you know, I, I brought a mix back that I'd done on the G series. It was a band from Moscow. We tracked it all over in Riga on the G, and I brought it here to mix. And it was it was like bringing it back through a Neve or something. It was just it was just like oh my, what what's you know? It was really really unexpected surprise. And I took the mixes out to the car, you know, to the old car test and everything. And it was God, they sound really warm. I you know I, I don't know if that's a conscious decision by SSL to do that, but but it, it's a very different beast 